Presented by Private Internet Access. Welcome back to We're All Satoshi. It is the end of October 2017. I'm Rick Falkinger talking to Moritz Beerling from Neufeld. And if you're looking a little bit further out into the future, how has Neufeld fundamentally changed investing? How do, will our grandchildren look at cryptocurrency not as a replacement for central bank money, but look on its, on its own merits? What's the big picture? It's a very good question, and it's, it's definitely fraught with insecurity <laughs> as to where it goes. I think Neufund itself will, if we are successful, um, we will have shifted a lot of the a lot of the enthusiasm that, that originally pervaded this space and still is in there into actual change in terms of making the, 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 the advantages of cryptocurrency available to larger amounts of people. I mean, we, we explicitly call ourselves a bridge between the blockchain uh, space and the, the kind of venture capital space. Um, and not only the, the investors or the, the, the large people, but also making just making this technology available to, to many more people. And so we actually think that through this, these kind of um, mechanisms, these kind of platforms where you take something that's familiar to people and you add a twist to it with this new capabilities uh, is the best way that we can enlarge the space of the, the users of cryptocurrency and, uh, and really push this revolution uh, in progress through. Um, yeah. Combining existing inventions is sometimes the biggest invention of them all. Right. One of the most famous invention, well, famous invention through all history, was just a combination of four different inventions of its time: metal movable type, the squeeze press, oil ink, oil-based ink, and cheap discarded cloth-based paper, which was Gutenberg's printing press. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing small or discardable about combining elements at all. That that's how right. the biggest inventions come about. Right, but again, there's something that we that we have to always keep an eye out is uh, not necessarily porting the old mental models into the the new technology, right? Right. right. And because it, these habits die hard. You, you're so used to operating under certain uh, progression, like models of progression of, of stories, of narratives, all these different things that structure the reality around you that make it intelligible, so that you can right. actually act within it. And so, I think one of the larger benefits and, and, and uh, really powerful draws of, of this cryptocurrency space is that it enables new narratives to form, mm. that, that we can, we can uh, form new communities around new narratives. I mean, that's often what these token sales or these new cryptocurrencies do. They, they have their own narrative as what the world will look like, what is possible. Mm -hmm. And then they fund that narrative and the development of it and the technology that labels it through those token sales. So I think that is, is a very uh, under estimated aspect that it's, it's not always about only the technology but actually what the the social shifts uh, it enables uh, makes i can see that like you still have the concept of a company the concept of a president of a company the concept of a project in a company right. the concept of funding a company launching a company mm -hmm. and a company then producing a product as in it's hard to predict what this looked like 50 years down the road but we have these concepts because they enable us to speak somewhat the same language. Yes. Maybe it'll be like we, we just we're just launching projects and discarding the projects when we're done with them. Right. A company, what we think of as a company today, could have a three month lifespan mm -hmm. and be more of what we think of as a project. Right. And be funded by something like Neufund or Neufund itself. Right. Similar to the swarms that you also introduced. Exactly. Right? Exactly. We saw it in the political sphere. Now we see it, I think, also in the economic sphere. Much. That's more. a very interesting parallel, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that you have these small chunks of narrative, people, and technology cohering around a central idea, and mm. then trying to achieve it. And we're not yet there. I think where we have right. companies. Uh, forming within the span of three months and then already disintegrating, having produced value. Right. And in, in doing this, you're on the outside of your shell. You're looking like the old world, mm -hmm. which gives you the capability to interact with it. Yes. But on the inside of your shell, you're running, you're so much more agile. You're running so much faster. You're operating completely differently. Right. And interacting to the old world, it becomes a skill in itself, it becomes a necessity. At some point, this though, as this bubble grows, 
that becomes less of a necessity. You can have companies, projects on the inside yes. that are so close to the center, they don't need to interact with the old one. Right. Right? Isn't that true? We're reacting with an environment where certain assumptions are already given right. about this new space that you don't have to state them every time anew or kind of pretend that you are acting under the old models. Um, but overall, I think the, the longer term picture, the five to ten years down the road, I'm still, like, I kind of take a, an overall optimistic stance to the whole space. But I always uh, kind of achieve that optimism through radical uh, pessimism in the short term. Uh, <laughs> no, I that's always good. that's I, mathematical proof by contradiction. <laughs> like this can this might not work. Oh, it works! Great. Right, right. I'd rather have my expectation that it's going to fail, be proven wrong, than the other way around. So I, I try to go. Okay, what are the problems that are propping up right now? We we definitely don't haven't solved the skating problem. It's still very much in research. It, mm. There are lots of smart people working on it, and I'm, I'm hopeful that they solve it. But again, I'd rather be over, over uh, worrying, over concerned about it until it is solved than not. Uh, and there's so much value already riding on Ethereum and other blockchains yeah. that we'd better fig figure this out before all of that value has to migrate somewhere else and all these structures have to be disintegrated again. And so overall, um, I'm also wondering what the general progression of cryptocurrencies will be. I think we'll have a split, an even more pronounced split, between explicitly kind of anarchic, libertarian, mm -hmm. um, the against the state the, currencies. Yeah, the ones who were in for the ideology. Exactly, exactly. Who were the majority at the beginning. Yeah, and, and didn't care about the value. Who cares about the value? This is about being free from the state. Exactly. Using tools to further your ends. Yeah, exactly. unslaved. Exactly. And then we're going to see the other branch, which I think will grow more in economic value, mm. uh, probably, uh, than the smaller uh, branch. Yeah, I think um, Bitcoin was interesting in that way. That I mean, Bitcoin was first, and the white paper stating that we are going to use profit to make this work. Right. As an, I haven't seen that done, made before. Right, right, right. Using economic logic to secure this network. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but again, I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, uh, not very hopeful or I'm pessimistic about the overall use of cryptocurrency as being this liberator overall for everybody. Um, because I think that what governments and, and industry currently might be doing, I'm not entirely sure about it, is just waiting for the private sector to fund the development of this overall technology. Mm -hmm. And then once it is somewhat fully developed, they will step in and disallow certain types of this technology and allow other types of technology. The anarchic ones will not care. They will still use the ones that no. are available and they don't, they're not reliant on the ones that are banned. Mm. But the mainstream, you think, will, yes, will yes. do as because, the government says. Because they have the legal system on their mm. side, they can um, disallow people from using it in their companies, all these different things. There's a precedent for this. The, um, the subtitle of the Bitcoin white paper is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Governments have been going all out trying to stop peer-to-peer -peer technologies since at least Napster, mm -hmm. 1980, 1998, 1999. Right. And the peer-to-peer -peer technologies started, the, the growth started slowing off around 2011, no, 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. because everybody was doing it. The only reason for peer-to-peer -peer technologies to, st to slow right. was that it was saturated. Right. Every household was doing torrenting on a regular basis. So, yes, I can see governments trying to stop this. I can, <laughs> I can say with confidence that they haven't been very successful so far in stopping peer-to-peer -peer technologies without providing a better alternative. Mm -hmm. Well... There are, there are different types of cryptocurrencies now. There are the anonymous ones, which are the minority. Uh, mm. Bitcoin is not anonymous. And no. Nobody who uses it Very should, should think that. Yeah, exactly. There are now several analysis firms who are providing services to the state, specifically in trials, to, like, to, to follow the flows of money to yep. make sure that people are incriminated or not. Um, and so it's not the... It's, it's not <laughs> it's some, some of these regulators have actually heard through rumors that they are very happy that people are using Bitcoin because all of their money flows are now publicly visible and yep. traceable back in time throughout years. Yeah, I so, heard that. Yeah, so, I heard that too. So it's, it's not, it's not a, a, like a, a purely advantageous technology for us to use. Um, another thing that I'm worried about, and I, and I hate to be the controversial person here, but I am worried about, again, that we are, we're going with, the, the scaling problem is not going to be figured out. 
um, and that will have horrible crashes and burns in that sense. And I, I actually think that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies overall are not even as decentralized, or at least not as distributed as we would like them to be, because they all rely on, on having all hosting this central database. And yeah. at the moment still, mostly everybody having to hold all of the data, which, yeah. is, which is not good. Like it's not good for adoption. It's not good for the growth of the network, the transaction speed, all these different things. And yeah. so I am actually very hopeful that there are other technologies currently being developed that go a step beyond blockchain even, kind of add another component on it, specifically uh, the project that I, I think has the most uh, chance of, of succeeding, which is Holochain. And, and Holo, Holochain? Yes. Okay. Yes, by the, the people behind the Scepter project. And, and they're actually taking blockchain technology and adding kind of a dimension um, and, and removing the requirement to have all of the data be stored in every node. They, you only have to host a certain amount of data to be able to participate in the network. Uh, and okay. then they achieve that through um, yeah, having a very different uh, philosophical outlook, I, I'd say, from this ontology where um, there's the central truth that everybody is uh, adhering to, right? right? Which is the database. Right, the, the consensus. Truth. Exactly, the consensus. And they structure everything around consensus only on the level that is relevant between parties. So hmm. if you and I transact, it has only to be between you and I and then there is intrinsic data integrity to make sure that nobody is cheating. So I, I can't go possibly into the details of how that works at the moment. Um, it sounds technically complicated. Yes. It probably has math in it I don't understand. <laughs> I think you, of all people, probably might still be able to follow. So, uh, But yeah, I'm very hopeful about these kind of things. But I think we will figure out those, those, those scaling problems overall. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to keep my eyes open to other approaches, to not stay locked into, again, a new model that may be already be old. So, you, so you're saying your major prediction for the future is that governments will fight back and when they do, it's going to be ugly. Absolutely. And, and you, you have to be very careful to keep your values that you try to build into that technology front and center um, and to even stick to them when, when governments are going to come to repress them. And so, um, yeah, maybe keep your, your public persona, your public company and, and conduct on the table, over the table, economic activity to be legitimate mm. and then... For whatever end, other ends you have in mind, um, be sure to, to use anonymous cryptocurrencies. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Morris. Thank you. It's been a great interview. Yeah, thank you.